thanks for joining us again for another sunny side design tutorial today we will show you how to stencil your own curtains so what we've done here we have a drop cloth taped to the counter then we taped our fabric onto the drop cloth so it's nice and taut and it won't move and we have our Casablanca stencil here that we have also taped down to the fabric. You want everything to be nice and secure so the stencil doesn't move. You get nice crisp lines with your painting. I'll just show you really quick some of the supplies you'll need. I've already poured some of my paint here into my mixing bucket with um, fabric medium. Then you'll just need your stir stick to blend it all together. You will need a little bit of paper towels your foam roller, and then either paper plates with kind of a waxy surface to it so the paint doesn't get too goopy and get your plate. I don't even know how to describe that. Your plate will get too wet and soggy. So either a paper plate with kind of a waxy surface or a foam plate. And then also for cleaning the stencil, it's best to use baby wipes because you can just wipe off the stencil and then throw your wipes away. Um, we don't have those today, so we just have a wet washcloth. So what you're gonna do first is make sure you, I'm just gonna get the remaining paint out of this can really quickly, but you'll just want to mix your paint with your fabric medium. Now the fabric medium is going to help your paint bond to your fabric. When you're completely done painting, you will need to heat set it. This will give you even better bonding if you plan to wash them at all. So once you have that out, mix it really well. And the fabric medium makes the paint a little bit runnier than the paint consistency and that's okay. You just wanna make sure it's all mixed really well in here. And the next thing you're going to do is pour a little bit of the paint onto your plate and load your roller. When you're loading, you wanna make sure that the roller is loaded enough but not saturated in paint because we don't want to get too much on there and cause bleeding under the stencil. And then you just, with very light pressure, rub on your paper towel. And that's just going to get off any excess paint on any areas of the foam roller. And then we start rolling. So the key to roll with a stencil and not have bleeding under your image is to actually start with your roller on the stencil surface and then roll directly onto the fabric in all directions. And then you can kind of go back and forth once you get in the middle surface there. You will want to press pretty firmly once you get it on the fabric as well because the fabric really soaks up the paint. Alright, so I'm just going to do a few of the patterns here for you. Again, I'm just continuing to roll from the template onto the fabric. That helps your shape to be nice and crisp. Again, I'm just pushing with a fair amount of pressure onto the fabric as well, so it really gets into the fabric. The more paint you apply now, the more opaque your design will be when they're hanging. All right, now that I have this much of the pattern painted, I'll show you how we clean the stencil. I'm just gonna carefully lift up the frog tape 
and remove my stencil. And then I have an old towel over here. You can remove your tape at this point if you would like. We used nice fresh pieces of tape with each time we placed it on the fabric again, just so it would be nice and sticky. We wouldn't have any of the tempo lifting up. Then you're just gonna use a wet rag. Actually, baby wipes work better because you're gonna go through a lot of them. <laughs> you can pick them up at the dollar store. But you're just gonna wanna clean the paint off in between each time that you um, reposition your stencil. The reason for that is the paint dries on the plastic of the stencil quickly. And if you're moving it from one section to another, you could get um, paint flex rolling from the stencil onto the new piece that you're painting. It also does get a little bit of paint on the backside too. So when you're placing it on your curtain, you don't wanna be transferring any of that wet paint onto your nice um, curtain panel. So after I wipe this side, I will turn it over and wipe this side as well, and then I will show you how we reposition the stencil. All right, we've got this all cleaned off now. Uh, another thing I wanna mention um, why it's really important to clean this in between each time you move the stencil, if you were to keep rolling and repositioning, it actually will build up a layer of paint on the outside design of your stencil and it will change the shape of your actual stencil. So your, as you would go, your stencil pattern would actually get smaller and smaller. So it is kind of a tedious step um, to clean it off in between each time you reposition, but it really is worth it if you want nice crisp lines and the same size of shape throughout your whole curtain panel. So once it's been cleaned, you can line up your stencil here with the patterns that you've already done and then you would just adhere it down again and then keep going forward with your curtain. So it's pretty simple to do. It does take some time but it does have a nice um, finished look when it's all done. So we will show you our finished curtain panels and show you how it looks in the room. All right, here we are in the room where they are hanging. When the paint has completely dried, you will want to heat set them like I mentioned before. If you're doing a small project like a t-shirt or something, you can easily heat set with um, an iron. And the directions for that are on your fabric medium. Since this was an entire panel that we did, we threw it in the dryer for about 20 minutes on high heat. Once it's out, um, that just helps the fabric bond to the curtains. And then you may have to do a little bit of ironing just to do a little touch up and remove some of the wrinkles. But I just wanted to show you close up how they turned out. Um, you can refer to our blog post for more in-depth tutorial, step-by-step -step pictures. And hope you enjoyed watching our tutorial today. And as always at Sunnyside Design, we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.